Welcome back for another Super Magnet Man video. This video is on sensors, in particular Hall sensors. Sensors are in the world around us. They tell us everything about it. And one of the types of sensors that we're looking at and we have a lot of calls about is using the Hall sensor. It's a very small sensor and many times you're just using a very small magnet. And as the magnet passes by it, the Hall sensors can tell us, is it a North Pole? Is it a South Pole? Or does it matter? And you can get all of those different kinds of Hall sensors. You can get them that detect very weak fields, all the way up to some very strong fields. You want to make sure you get the right field for your application. If you get one that's too weak and stray magnetic fields can trigger the device, that's not what you're looking for. You want to make sure you get one that works in your target range and you don't want to get a magnet that's too big for your application because it might trigger your sensor before you want it to. It might trigger it from a half of an inch away instead of one quarter of an inch or one eighth of an inch. So with this, we're going to take a look at some applications like that. These things can help us determine level detection. They can tell us whether windows are open or closed. They can tell us whether a door is open or closed. They are used in so many different ways. It's just hard to even think of how to list them. And one of the ways that we use it here is as a tachometer. And a tachometer gives us the rotational speed of something. So we're going to take a look at that now. You remember back when we did the eddy current drag experiment and we had to get all that data. Well, one of the pieces of information we really needed was the, R the rotational speed, the RPM of our drill, so we could tell when it was slowing down. And drills don't usually come with that, or at least small drill presses like this don't, so we needed to add one. To add one, we super glued a small magnet to our chuck here so that every time it goes by this hall sensor, there's a hall sensor embedded in this and the hall sensor sends the signal over and we bought the full kit so we had a tachometer that runs with it. So now when we turn on our drill press you can see that we're getting the rotational speed of that drill head and if we did something to make it slow down you can tell it on the display and so as we drill you can see it slows the drill press down, but not very much. So you like the drill press application. Occasionally we get customers that contact us after they finish their design and they've put the magnets in place and it doesn't work the way they want it to. They ask us if there's a way we can help them solve the problem. I have a couple of those applications we've dealt with in the past to help you see how you need to think about using the Hall sensors and magnets. First one we want to look at is the customer had a cylinder that moved back and forth and they had a magnet affixed to this cylinder and they wanted to know when it reaches the end of its stroke to signal to come back and go back and forth. The problem was that the sensor was picking up the magnet before they wanted it to. So we recommended putting a piece of steel on both sides of the sensor so that it shielded it until the magnet was right across from it. A second application that we had, we had a customer who had already gone to manufacturing with this idea. They had already gotten into the step, but it wasn't working. So what was the application? They had a magnet and somebody had designed it so that the magnet was 90 degrees to where the sensor is. And they were saying, well, it's not working. The magnet's not working. And when they sent me a picture of it, I pointed out, well, your orientation of the magnet is 90 degrees. It needs to be directly in line with the sensor. They said, well, we can't change that. We've already paid for the stamping to get this piece made, and we're in production with it. What can we do now? So I said, what if we take a little piece of angle metal, just as thick as sheet metal, and we bend it at a 90, and you stick it to the front of the magnet, it's going to gather a lot of that magnetic field and it will channel it down to the end here and your sensor should be able to pick it up because the sensor was going to pick up 30 or 40 gauss and that made it very easy. Turns out it worked like a charm. They were extremely happy to have a solution to their design issue. Now naturally if they had talked to me to begin with I would have suggested how to put it the right, right the first time. 
And this is the thing we want to learn is if you're in a design phase, it's good to talk to the people with the magnets first so we can help you best select the right magnet so that you don't run into this problem. But if you do run into this problem or you have this kind of problem, call us and we'll try and help you come up with a creative solution at Super Magnet Man. Thank <laughs> you.